Hello and welcome to Death Went to SAS blog. Today we are going to be talking about using ProxSQL to construct arrays and then later to use these arrays we've constructed. This first video I split them up in two because it's pretty intense. So the first video is just about how to use ProxSQL to construct these arrays. And again if you're a SAS aficionado you're probably thinking why don't you just do it in a data set? It's super simple. Well, if you're used to thinking in SQL like I am, it is not really obvious what's going on in this SAS data step. Yes, it's more efficient than any of this proc SQL, but it's sort of hard to tell what's going on when you're used to thinking in SQL. So that's why I use this process, and it's the only one I seem to be able to untangle in my mind. And so maybe it'll help you. Um, ever since this paper came out by Stuart Long and Ed Heaton, uh, who I don't know, but I now love, because I really couldn't figure out arrays until this paper. And uh, so they show how to use the SAS data step in ProxSQL to create macro arrays. And we're going to use an example from their paper. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about actually using the arrays we constructed. And in that, I'm, I will refer a little bit more to Mira Kumar's paper. She, and she talks, you kind of have to do a combination data step and SQL thing to use the array. All right, so let's get programming. So here we are. If we um, look into the Long and uh, Heaton article, we'll see that they create an array first by basically just creating a table in SQL. I'm just going to copy this from my other window in here. I added no print here. Uh, so well, let's go through this code. Proc SQL and quit. Everything in between there is going to be SQL code. So if you wanted to use data steps or other SAS stuff, you have to be outside these two bookends. No print just says don't open the output um, window to return our records. And the reason why is we're going to be just manipulating data. We can just go over here in the Explorer window and look at it. It's much easier. Okay, so proxy equals. So here's our first thing we're going to do before this is create table my data. That's going to be the name of the table. It's going to be in our work directory because we didn't specify any library here. Um, and what we're telling it to do is create that with one column, and the column is var name, and uh, it's a character 10 column. And we're not telling it to put any data in there, so this is just an empty table with one column. Then we're inserting uh, rows into that. We just do values, diabetes, values, HBP, and it can figure out, because we only have one column name, that each line we're going to just put one value on. And basically, so what you would expect is, after this step, a blank table, which you probably can't see, and then after this step, four rows with just this in each row. So let's run this. And then let's go look at the log, and look at that, it's a happy log, right? Zero rows in one column, that's what we expected, we expected this here. And um, let's even convince ourselves more by going over to this explorer, and there's my data, let's take a look at it. Yeah, there, there's a var name, recognize all that. Okay, so what you just realized is an array is just a list of words. The problem with constructing it is getting it into memory. Here, it's in a data set, it's not in memory. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to put it in memory in a few different ways. Well, here's one way, is you can add this little thing in. So we're going to just add this in. Let's see what's going on here. Um, we recognize into from this insert into, so we're putting something into something. So select var name, remember that's our column, into, oh look at this colon. That colon means we're going to select this into instead of a data set into memory. So into disease one dash disease blah, 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 right? Well let's look at what this is. It starts with an ampersand, right? And the and sign. I like to say ampersand because it sounds more technical or whatever, but it's really just an and sign, okay? Well when you see an and sign uh, in SQL 2, I think, what it means is it's saying a variable that changes each time is going to be put in here. Now, sysmaxlong is a system variable. It's just in there. It's in SAS. And it, it's counting how many of these you put in. So it was just sitting there in the background counting those. So instead of saying disease 1, disease 4, because maybe you might edit this list and lose track of it, you can just throw that in, and it'll count it each time and put that there. It'll just automatically make fill this in with, like, 4 from my data. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. So we run it. I didn't clear the log, so we'll see it from last time. Okay, so here we go. Um, yep, there's select into. Great, right? Like, you don't know what happened. Right? We don't know what happened. 
Okay, well, it's the same old data set here. How do we know if it got into memory? Well, that's when you have to do put. You know when programmers do all this code in between so they can see the variables and what the values are and stuff? That's so hard for me, but put is actually really easy. So I'm going to copy some of this put over here. So the variables that we loaded into memory were disease 1 through disease 4, because that's what SysMax along to resolve to. Okay, so here's a way to look. So I, I wrote this put here. You just put this percent put. Then you write anything you want here. I happen to write this is the value of disease one colon. Like anything can go here. And then here you put the little and sign, right? Because this is a changeable variable. We want to see what happens to be in disease one at that point, right? And so we do this put run, and then I'm going to run this. Here we go. Look over at the log. Well, there's where our excitement is, is in the log. So notice it runs, this is just my code, right? You know, just like this code up here. And the next is the evaluated version. This is the value of disease one. Diabetes, awesome. This is the value of disease two, HBP. So we managed to load this into memory, right? And and just to, as an example, you really can write anything here because like I love Ozzy Osbourne, Ozzy rules. Okay, so now, well, I don't know what the, exclamation point is gonna I, you can't be very excited in SAS let's just run this and notice it says Aussie rules asthma well that's kind of bad uh, he shouldn't do that um, he shouldn't rule asthma asthma is not that good to have all right so this was one way of loading this into memory as a an array here's another way um, and you'll see why this is different I'm just going to throw this down. Oops. Copy paste error. Here we go. So this time we're still selecting var name into only we're only doing one variable. So I you need four things into one variable. Well, you separate them by a space here, right? So that's what we're going to do. And of course, uh, you can look at the log and be happy, but you don't know what it looks like until you do put here is what is in disease right now. And we'll put disease, right? Remember our ampersand? Cool. Run, and let's see what we get. Remember, we'll go look over at log. Oh, here we go. Just what we thought, separated by space. Okay, well, now I'm happy to say you have all this in memory, and in my next video, I will show you how to use it.